Peace and welcome back to Perfect Exposure Course. By now, hopefully you've already seen what camera to buy, what lens to buy, talked about different filters. We've even walked you through the settings and navigation of a few cameras as well. So by now you're in a perfect position to learn what you need to learn in reference to photography. So that's what I wanna do with you right now. I wanna introduce the perfect exposure. Now the perfect exposure, not only is it a course, but it's the whole reasoning behind why I created this entire course. That's why it's named that. Perfect exposure is kind of how we see photography. Photography to me is the manipulation of light. And how do we manipulate light? Well, we use three things, which is called the exposure triangle. That's why photography to me is manipulation of light because it is all about exposure. And we use the exposure triangle to create that perfect exposure. Welcome to the course, guys. Listen. Okay, so I want to talk about perfect exposure and how you can create it with the camera and lens combo that you've already got with the package that you did in the very first couple of videos here. And we're gonna talk about how we can create perfect exposure before we even take a picture. That's the most important part, is understanding what exposure is and how you can manipulate it. So first things first, you may have heard me talk about a few things called the exposure triangle, and that's what we wanna actually begin with. The exposure triangle is made up of three things. It's made up of shutter speed, the aperture or the f-stop, and the ISO. Now each one of those things does different jobs, but they all combine to create exposure. Let's first talk about the shutter speed. The shutter speed is the curtain that's in front of your sensor. Whenever you purchase a camera, your sensor is covered up and it's covered up by a shutter. That's to protect it. So whenever you hit the shutter button, that shutter opens up and then it closes again. It opens up to let the light in and let the sensor get exposed and then it closes back up again to stop the light from the sensor being exposed. That's a picture. Opening up, shutting it down. Pretty much letting the light come in and then telling the light when to stop coming in. That's the entire function of the shutter. It's to let light in for a certain duration of time. That's why when you see the shutter speed, you can see times from one over 80. That means it'll open up 80% of a second. Or you can see one over one where it'll open up for one full second and then close down. The length of time that you have your shutter speed open, the more light that you let into your sensor, the more movement that you let into your sensor. So remember that, because those two are gonna be very important. The length of time that you have your shutter speed open, the more light that you're letting into your sensor and the more movement that you're letting into your sensor. You see a lot of pictures and a lot of photographers who take pictures of the solar system or the stars, the Milky Way. You can catch it going over almost every neighborhood every single night. And the way that they get those awesome pictures is that they open up their shutter speed so long that they capture light that we can't see with our naked eye. Also, you may notice pictures or images of waterfalls and the water just looks silky and it doesn't look like that in real life. They leave their shutter speed open to capture that motion of the water coming down so it kind of just runs into each other. One of the reasons why if you're ever gonna have a long shutter speed, a tripod is always gonna be necessary because it's going to capture motion and capture light. So remember that in reference to the shutter speed. Whenever you wanna capture motion, you're either gonna expose or keep your shutter speed open longer to caption a duration of motion, or if you just wanna freeze someone in frame. You've seen pictures of, of professional sprinters and they're moving really quick, but they get a snapshot of them just stop right there in this running, pulling motion. 
is because the shutter speed is up very high that it opens up very quick and closes really quick so it doesn't capture any motion at all and it just kind of freezes that person right into place. So you use shutter speed for two things. Shutter speed lets in light and stops light from coming in and it also captures or freezes motion. By knowing that, you know the first step in the exposure triangle. Now let's move down to the second step. So the second step in the exposure triangle, we talked about how long your shutter is exposed to light. We talked about how your shutter can actually control the motion. Let's move down to the second point of the exposure triangle and let's talk about the aperture. Now the aperture is also known as the f-stop because that's what you're gonna see whenever you're inside of camera. You're gonna see what your f-stop number is. F-stop and aperture is the exact same thing. But the aperture acts as if your iris, for your eye, that's how it acts for your camera. Your aperture lets in a certain amount of light by opening up very wide or closing down very small. So that means when your shutter opens up, it lets in light for a duration of time, but your aperture lets in the amount of light. And it can either let in a lot of light by being open all the way, or it can only let in a little bit of light by being closed down. And these are very important when it comes to you taking photography and taking pictures and photographs. If you're outside and you're not shooting with off camera flash or you're shooting in direct sunlight or you're shooting on a bright sunny day, then you don't want all of that sun to come in because if it does, your picture is going to be overexposed. And the easiest way to cut down on some of that sun is to up your aperture. Stop that aperture to where the, the circle gets smaller. Once the circle gets smaller, that means it's only letting in a portion of that sun and you can accurately expose your image with that same camera using just those two, which is the shutter speed and the aperture. But aperture also has a secondary functionality to it. That functionality is depth of field. Now remember, it's just like your iris where it can control how much light is coming in or how much light is not coming in. But what it also controls on your camera, it controls what's in focus and how far that focal plane is. Now your focal plane can be very small to where my face could be in focus and my ears can start to be out of focus. That's someone with a wide open aperture. Or your focus could actually be where my face and everything behind me to infinity is in focus. That's someone with a shot or a stop down aperture as well. So like F22 or F16. That's why landscape artists, they start off between F16 and F22 because they wanna capture everything that they have in front of them. While us portrait artists, we normally shoot wide open with the lowest aperture that we possibly can be, like 1.4, 1.2, because we only want our subject to be in focus and we want that background to blur out very crispy and creamy like. So remember, aperture controls two things. It's just like your iris and it controls how much light it allows to come in once your shutter opens or how much light it doesn't allow to come in. And then the second portion of that, it controls your depth of field. It controls what's in focus and how far or how shallow or narrow that focus plane could actually be. So we've talked about shutter speed. Now we've talked about aperture f-stop. There's only one more in this exposure triangle, and that one more in this exposure triangle is ISO. A lot of people call it ISO, but it's actually ISO. And with ISO, the easiest way for me to explain what ISO is, is ISO controls the sensitivity of your camera to light. What that means is this. If you have a shutter speed and your aperture set, already, your ISO is going to control how sensitive your camera actually sees that light that you already have exposed. So if you have your shutter speed set and you have your aperture set, your ISO is set to the basic camera native, which normally is 100 and some cameras is 50, but if it's 100, then your camera is going to see what you have 
the same way that you have it exposed. Now, let's say for instance, you have your shutter speed set, you have your aperture set, but you set your ISO and you bump your ISO to something like 800. Well, the shutter speed, the duration of that light coming in and your aperture, how much light is coming in is going to be multiplied by eight times. So it's going to intensively make your picture brighter. And this is how your camera sees in low light situations. Your camera sees in low light situations because of the fact that you can actually up your ISO. Now, with upping your ISO, it allows your camera to see things in low light situation, but it does come with the price because that light that it's actually creating is enhanced. And the fact that it's enhanced means that it creates what we call digital noise. Now, digital noise is that grain, that grit, those dots that you see whenever a picture is taken in low light. That's the things you kind of avoid unless you're going for that particular look. That grit, that noise, and it sometimes can even come off as different colors, green and magenta colors as well, dots that will show up in your image. Generally, you want to avoid those, and you avoid those by keeping your ISO as low as possible. That's why, in conjunction, it's best to work with the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO to create one exposure. Because instead of bumping your ISO all the way up and creating that digital noise, you may want to increase your f-stop from maybe an f1.2 to f3.5, which will then let in more light so you don't have to use your ISO and you don't have to create that digital noise. Same as vice versa. You may want to increase the length of time that your shutter is exposed to light, making your picture brighter. Therefore, you don't have to raise your aperture or your ISO. And that's why it's called the exposure triangle because each one of those functions directly connects to the other function to help you get the exposure that you're going for. So remember, perfect exposure is done by understanding the ISO, the f-stop or aperture, and the shutter speed. Once you understand those three, at that point in time, you can actually see what your picture or your image is going to look like before you even take a picture. And you can notice if you're overexposed or underexposed, and this way you can get the perfect exposure before you even hit the shutter. If you got any questions in reference to the exposure triangle, always please let me know. Once again, my name is Jeff, and I'm in the light, giving you that perfect exposure. Peace. Peace, I hope that video was really helpful to you. And I just wanted to remind you, if you're really ready to get started in this photography business, really go from the basic to the business and everything in between with photography, I wanted to let you know that I have a full course over 45 videos detailing how you can do just that. It's called Perfect Exposure Course, and all you need to do is go to www.perfectexposurecourse.com to sign up now. Once you sign up, you will get 25 minutes of free training that I give to you personally. And plus, quick hint, after that, you want to wait until the video is completely over because I give you a code on how you can get the full course lifetime membership for 50% off. That's right, 50% off, but that's going on right now. So make sure you go to perfectexposurecourse.com. Again, my name is Jeff, and I'm in the light giving you that perfect exposure. Peace.